In two days from now, President-elect Bola Tinubu will take the oath of office as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And this is the seventh inauguration in Nigeria's fourth republic. We are counting down to the handover. You can share your thoughts now on Twitter using the hashtag Countdown to May 29. Remember to mention at TVC News NG. Thanks for joining us on the program. I am Aposedi Adenio Aderemi. Well, let's uh, quickly tell you about the events lined up for the inauguration. Uh, we've had the Jumat prayers earlier today and the public lecture. But then tomorrow, May 27th, an inauguration lecture would be delivered by the former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. The lecture is titled A Deepening Democracy for Integration and Development. There is also a Children's Day program on the same day that will include a parade and children's party. On May the 28th, that is Sunday, an interdenomination church service will hold at the National Christian Center Abuja. That will be followed by an inauguration dinner and gala night at the State House Conference Center. That will be at 7 p.m. On the 29th of May, which is the D-Day, it would feature inauguration parade and swearing in at the Eagle Square at 10 a.m. And guests are expected to be seated by 8.30. A post-inauguration luncheon is scheduled for 1.30 p.m. same day at the State House Banquet Hall. And it's strictly for Mr. President, with Brother President, Head of Government and his invited guests. Let's talk more about the inauguration ceremony, this uh, seventh in the Fourth Republic. And joining me is a member of the House of Representatives and a really close ally of the president-elect, James Faliki. Thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, let's begin by getting a reaction to the court judgment today that dismissed the suit filed by the PDP on the candidacy of president-elect and his vice. Well, thank you. Uh, the judgment that was delivered today by the Supreme Court, the welcome development and the sets uh, the ground for peaceful reconciliation amongst the other parties. Now that they have suffered this setback, I'm sure they will look inward and know that even the ones at the, tri at the tribunal will surely die the same way. Yeah. So it's a welcome development. Mm. And in a few days uh, from now, the man, Bola Tinubu, will be sworn in as president. How soon do you expect him to form his cabinet? Well, first, let's, let's give thanks to God for giving us this victory and uh, giving Nigerians this victory. And of course, we appreciate Nigerians for coming out to vote for him, despite all the inconveniences. Uh, for me, the... How soon he will form the cabinet depends on him. We cannot determine, but the law is clear, very, very clear. Within 60 days of absorption of office, he must form his cabinet, unlike before when we had no law. Now we have the law signed by the uh, going president. Uh, from May 29, you start to count 60 days. So he will form his cabinet with the All right. And uh, how do you? Uh, see his ability to further unite the country at this particular time, especially to... I'm talking about how how you see him uniting the country after the drama that characterized the elections in February and March. Well, I think you, you I mean, I don't understand what you mean by drama, but uh, the election came and uh, we, we won based on our uh, capacity capacity based on the fact that Nigerians believed in us. It's clear that we won the elections, uh, despite that we even lost key states. The numbers matter. And uh, as far as we are concerned, uh, Nigerians have voted ABC. And uh, in, in the reconciliation process, peace process, you saw that uh, the president-elect has started with Papasu and we are discussing with others. I think that um, it is time for all Nigerians to come together and forget elections and look and look ahead to bring the Nigeria back to to to, to record. Mm. The manifesto of the APC, the Renewed Hope Manifesto, is loaded with you know huge promises for Nigerians about a better tomorrow. How confident are you that the president-elect will deliver on these lofty promises? 
Well, let me tell you, let me say that personally, as James Abiodun Faleki, I was part of those who started this project earlier, earlier than any other person. I was part of those who believed strongly that only Bola and Metsunubu could come in at this time to solve our, our critical uh, problems. And so we started very early, and uh, even when nobody believed, uh, it was doable. So I'm so confident that Bola and Metsunubu will by the grace of God, he will solve the majority of our crisis and bring us back to uh, a, prog a progressive level that all Nigerians will be happy with. Yes, it's not going to be easy. There are going to be ups and downs and uh, because the economic situation in Nigeria now, or the same thing across the world, is bad. But I'm sure that uh, when he put up his thinking car, a lot of things will change for the, for the better. Mm. Out of the different issues, which do you consider a priority that the president-elect should focus on? I think priority areas will be our revenue. Our revenue is very poor compared to our uh, expenditures. Uh, uh, of course, we might talk about uh, subsidy and of um, power. Honorable James Faleke, a former secretary of the Presidential Campaign Please. Council. All right, you may kindly go ahead, Mr. Faleke. All right, we'll reconnect with uh, Honorable James Abiodun Faleke for more on the plans for the new administration and especially the expectations for the incoming president, Bola Tinobu. All right, Mr. Faleke, you were talking about the priority area. As you mentioned, economy. Please go ahead with that. That was um, how soon was it? Can you come back again on your question? Yes, I'm asking that you continue where you stopped. You were talking about the economy, about power, and uh, of course, uh, please go ahead with that. Land on your thoughts. All right. Or the incoming government will be first uh, tackle the issue of revenue, uh, stop this uh, mogus leakage of oil subsidy, uh, and of course power. Uh, if we're able to take this on within the first six months in office, I'm sure so many other things will turn around for the country. That's what I said. Indeed, and Nigerians are looking forward to that, and especially to the president-elect hitting the ground running from day one, soon as he is inaugurated. Well, on the program tonight, let's quickly bring you some of the stories. Uh, the Federal High Court in Abuja has now imposed a fine of 17 million naira on three litigants and their lawyer for filing a frivolous suit seeking to stop the inauguration of the president-elect, Bola Tinobu. Justice James Omotosho imposed the fine on Praise Ilemona, Pastor Paul Audu, and Anongu Moses, who jointly instituted the suit, praying for an order to halt the May 29th swearing in of Bola Tinubu as president. The three litigants are jointly to pay the president elect a sum of 10 million naira and another 5 million naira to the All Progressives Congress, who were part of the seven defendants in the suit. Earlier today, the Supreme Court dismissed a suit filed by the People's Democratic Party challenging the eligibility of the Bola Tinobu uh, candidacy in the February 25th election. The court held that the appellant failed to show documentary evidence that uh, Kashim Shetima was a candidate for double nomination. Judiciary correspondent Celestine Iria brings us more on that. The People's Democratic Party contended that the MANA, the APC, and Ashwadu Tunubu nominated Mr. Shetima as vice presidential candidate for the election was in gross breach of the provisions of the Electoral Act. The party had argued that there were evidence to establish that Mr. Shetima was nominated twice, both for the vice presidential position as well as for the Bruno Central Senatorial seats, an action the PDP maintained was in contravention of the law. Delivering judgment, the APS court held that the issue of low cost is important. A plaintiff's low cost is linked with the cost jurisdiction. A plaintiff must show harm or substantial harm done to him by the action he is complaining about. 
The appellant relied greatly on section 245, subsection 14c of the Constitution. This section deprived the appellants of the locus as it bars interference of political parties into the affairs of other political parties. There are exhibits before the court that the fourth respondent withdrew his nomination or candidature for the Senate before accepting the nomination for the Vice President. The fourth respondent did the needful before accepting the nomination of the Vice President in line with Section 31 of the Electoral Act. The determination of pre-election matter has time limits, the 18 days for the trial court to exercise its jurisdiction and the 16 days for the appellate court to exercise its jurisdiction has lapsed. The suit was a waste of judicious time of the court. A cost of two million naira was awarded against the plaintiff. Irrespective of the unlawfulness of what uh, APC did, we are not members of APC and we cannot challenge it. Well, this is the Supreme Court. We can't, like I told them in court, we can't appeal to God. We will stop here. We are bound by their judgment. The Supreme Court has spoken and spoken very, very loudly. And I think the significance of it is not so much for the judgment, which we ordinarily expect, considering that we believe from the one that this was a frivolous suit. And um, we have confessed that in the High Court, in the Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court has affirmed that we are right. The court took her time to explain duties in the judgment by citing an example of 1999 where Atiku Abubakar won the governorship election in Adamawa State but also got nominated as the vice presidential candidate of the PDP to run alongside Richard Mubasinjo. Mr. Atiku abandoned his governorship ambition to focus on being the vice president. His deputy, Bunin Haruna, wanted to step in to become the governor where Aine who insisted to combat a fresh election. Today, the justices of the APS court pose a question to the PDP asking them what has changed from 1999 to 2023. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. The program is counted down to May 29. We'll be back after this break with more. Please stay with us. This is Countdown to May 29, Inauguration Day in Nigeria. Talking about the activities that will lead to the May 29 swearing-in, a public lecture and Juma prayer have been held today at the National Mosque. President-elect Bola Tinobu observed Juma prayers with President Muhammad Buhari inside the Presidential Villa Mosque. After prayers, President Buhari took the incoming president round the Presidential Villa on a familiarization tour and showed him the offices inside the inner chambers of the presidential villa. Meanwhile, at the National Mosque where the public lecture was held, the vice president-elect, Senator Kashim Shatima, pledged that the Bola Tinubu administration will hit the ground running immediately after the official swearing-in on the 29th of May. Telling deficit because of our high internet penetration index, because of our useful population, because of our proximity to Europe, and because of our proficiency in English language. India, last year, earned $135 billion from global outsourcing. How much did we earn as an oil producing nation? Not more than $30 billion. So ours is a great nation that is waiting to unleash its full potential to the world. China was once described as a sleeping giant. China had woken up. Nigeria needs to wake up. Inshallah, we are calling on all of you to pray for us, for Allah's guidance, for wisdom, and for protection. I want to reassure you that Ashwa Jubola Ame Tinibu will hit the ground running from day one. Inshallah. Because we do not actually have the luxury of time. The challenges facing us are humongous. As the Chinese will say, the worst cause that a Chinese man may wish for you is for you to live in interesting times. And indeed, we are living in interesting times. 
But be rest assured that in the fullness of time, Nigerians will come to pay glowing tributes to Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinigo. Vice President-elect Kashim Shatima there speaking at the Presidential Inauguration Public Lecture. Let's bring in our correspondent, Habida Lawal, for more on the countdown. Habida, walk us through today's event. There we heard the Vice President-elect talk about, you know, calling for prayers, for wisdom and for protection, even as they take on the reins of power. Well, um, Abbasade, it is interesting to note that Nigerians do not start any ceremonies without um, prayer. And as such, this inaugural Juma term prayer service um, is a notable one, considering the fact that Nigeria is one of the most religious um, um, people on um, Earth, according to a Google um, data, even um, overriding um, Saudi Arabia and uh, Israel. And um, with this um, service, it signifies the fact that um, the incoming administration and the transition process, they are praying for it to um, be seamless. And the incoming administration of, of, of understand the enormous um, task ahead of them. You could hear the vice president-elect, Kashim Shatima, talking about um, the challenges ahead of them with regards to the economy, um, security, and the, the fact that um, Nigeria needs to go beyond these challenges to ensure that in the next um, four years, we'll be telling a, a different um, story. And then um, dignitaries present at the, at the event, you have um, the secretary to the government of the Federation, Mr. Boss Mustafa, also um, um, corroborating what the vice president um, elect uh, have said at this event, the fact that Nigerians in general, it, it's time to, to have a uniting point and a prayer as such is a force that unites people regardless of where they come from above the And also quite profound is a statement that there's no luxury of time to waste. It still hits the ground running from day one. Talk to us uh, more about that. Well, um, 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 before where you have um, a luxury of time to um, put um, together your um, cabinet, this time around there is a law that says within 60 days you have to put that in place. So again, you, you see, we will we'll expect to see that the incoming administration understands this and work with that um, timing to ensure that all um, hands are on deck in different sectors of the economy um, to ensure that um, these visions are actualized. All right. And of course, talk to us more about you know, dignitaries who attend the event and your expectations from the new administration. Well, you have some security, top security personnel that also attended um, the event. Again, this event is signifying uh, the Muslim and Jumat service. Um, by tomorrow, you also have a public lecture at the International Conference Center. And of course, on Sunday, you have the Christian service, which will take place at the National Ecumenical Center um, before Monday, where we have the inauguration day. Mm. And could you just describe what security looked like around uh, that venue? Well, the security was um, watertight because, of course, um, there have been concerns around the fact that um, there will be or there is a possible, um, 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 uh, there might be possible situation where you have uh, a disruption of the inauguration um, process. And of course, this week being the inauguration week, and there are several events leading to May 29th. Of course, um, Abuja is wearing a very tight security look, and you could see um, fighter jets. Um, displaying um, their um, air power as well um, up until um, this evening. So again, it's just to reinforce the fact that security is um, on top of their game and to ensure that um, the process goes age free. And Abuja residents themselves, you know, how are they taking all of this? And the last time we witnessed something of this nature was in 2019. Well, the press release rolled out today um, states compared to 2019, um, the, because there have been some elements of um, disruption and uh, there have been protests here and there and people protesting to the venue of the presidential tribunal, that is um, the Supreme Court um, sitting in Abuja. You have um, um, security advisory stating that from today, Friday, from 200 hours, you have um, um, some parts of the Eagle Square cordoned off. And of course, leading tomorrow, you have a total cordoning of, of the venue of um, the inauguration 
leading up to Sunday and, of course, um, the day of the event. So compared to um, 2019, you understand that there are different um, disparities in um, some elements and uh, non-state actors that have been threatening um, to cause mayhem on that day. And, of course, the Department of State Services have come out several times to release statements that they are on top of the security situation and there's no cause for alarm about today. And Habida, I'm curious, how are you as a journalist feeling covering this epoch event? Well, um, it's um, exciting considering the fact that um, also for journalists, we've not um, been taken through this um, tedious um, accreditation process. You have to be accredited by uh, the state service themselves. And that was done um, all through the week for different uh, media. It's also exciting that this kind of event comes um, every four years. You get to um, get a deeper meaning and knowledge into um, the, the unity of Nigeria and how people um, tend to come together for a state function such as this. You also have people, foreign um, um, delegates that will come in. You don't get to see that every day, I've also said So maybe I should just congratulate you on that uh, beautiful experience you're having at this time. Thank you very much, Abida, for talking to us on the program. Well, that's it today on the program. Thank you very much for joining us. Watch a repeat broadcast at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And of course, Monday is D-Day. Stay with TVC News for up-to-date information, analysis, coverage of the presidential inauguration that will be taking place at the Eagle Square in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Abosedi Adeniru Adirimi.